My name is Chris and you're watching Di Actually, I don't want to get sued. You're watching Sparkplug TV. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Welcome back to Sparkplug TV. My name is Chris and I do car reviews for literally everybody, not just car enthusiasts. Before I begin today's video, please don't forget to like this video, comment something down below, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so that you get notified whenever I drop a new video, which is whenever I can. And uh, thank you for your support. Speaking of support, thank you to Johnson Volvo of Durham for sponsoring today's video. Located five minutes from South Point Mall off of I-40, Johnson Volvo of Durham is the number one volume Volvo dealership in North Carolina. And I mean, look at how modern and luxurious this showroom is. Thanks again, Johnson Volvo of Durham. Link in the description below. Now, I am a huge fan of Volvo. I always have been. My mom had a V70. Volvo, uh, the only new car that she's ever been claimed to buy, recently anyway. Um, back in 2003, she immediately backed it into a dumpster. I'm sorry, mom, for doxing you. Um, and I loved that car. It was incredible. I loved the leather. I loved just how cute it was. It was just so cute. Now, I am sad to see that, you know, America doesn't really want wagons anymore. I'm a huge shooting brake slash wagon fan. Uh, and at least they're still making sedans. And they're doing them well. Now, Wikipedia likes to refer to this as a compact sedan. And yeah, maybe in the first and second generation they were considered to be compact, but this is now a mid-sized luxury sedan. There's no way that this is compact. This thing is too big. This thing is as big as my old CTS. Anywho, the S60 comes in six different variants. Basically, you get two different powertrains and three trims to choose from. You get the Core, which is in the ICE version, comes in around $43,000. Or you get this one, which is the Recharge Ultimate, coming in around a whopping $58,000. Now, there's a lot that you get for that, but I'll get into that in a little bit. I will initially say, though, that it does come with these 19-inch gorgeous diamond cut wheels. They're so stunning. I love them. The PHEV version of the S60 did only come in around 2021, but this generation itself has been around since 2018. All right, let's move on to powertrains. Okay, firstly, I would like to touch on how wide this hood opens. Watch this. That is the widest stance I have seen for a hood in a long, long time. Anyways, this Volvo S60 comes standard with a 2.0 liter inline turbocharged four cylinder engine that is then tied to an 18.8 kilowatt hour battery pack and a 100 kilowatt rear axle placed motor, while the motor in the front the petrol one does enact the front axle, making this the E all-wheel drive drivetrain. This does also come in front wheel drive. I don't think I would be opting for that one myself personally, especially with the ICE version itself. Mm, I don't know. I actually really love this, but we'll get into that in my driving portion of the video. But this powertrain by itself is incredible. It also charges on a level two charging capacity within between three to six hours or on a 100 to 120 volt plug, uh, you're looking at about mm, 10 and 12 hours. It does have a charge mode like a lot of these luxury P halves do, which I actually really appreciate. Now, in terms of horsepower, it does push out 455 horsepower and a zero to 60 of 4.1 seconds. That's bonkers. For the week that I've had it, I cannot believe how quickly I have been able to go in this thing. Zen tied to an eight speed automatic transmission and um, yeah. Okay, so the second generation, she was cute. There was a reason that I went after her because I really liked her. I thought that she was very cute and friendly, approachable. This one though, this third generation, yeah, she can stay. She's got the thunder gray color with the black edition package. But from my understanding, the black edition is going to be standard across all of the S60s here on out. It was an option that you were able to get in the 23 and under models, but now apparently they're gonna be standard across the board, which basically means that you are getting black side view mirror paneling. You're getting a black front fascia, a black front grille. The way that it looks in general, it's just so aggressive, but it's not too aggressive. It's just like kind of right in the middle. 
of like aggression and it's still approachable, but it does kind of still keep in line with the Volvo design language that's going on in all across their models now. And it's just, you can just tell how much attention to detail there is, especially when it comes to the sunroof. Now, I feel like sunroofs are often forgot about in terms of the way that they're designed um, and, and implemented, but this one, literally, if you have designed a sunroof that is so well-crafted that even I pay attention to it, and I don't pay attention all the time, but the fact that I paid attention to how this sits when it's open is stunning. It, it literally just looks like it slides up on rails that were there that weren't there before, but they look like they were there when they were, uh, when it popped open. I don't know how to explain it. It just looks really great when it's open and, and I really appreciate that little attention to detail. Ah, uh, yes, to the back end. Now, um, I can confidently say that the back end matches up with outgoing S60 models because I do think that it is a little bit more recognizable than the front end in terms of, you know, where it's been and where it's going. I think that the way that this looks definitely emulates the last two generations, whereas the front end is just like fully redesigned and looks more like an S90 than it does anything else. That's not a bad thing. I'm just saying that it's just how it looks, but I love the back end. I love these tail lamps. I love the fact that they spaced out the Volvo like that and did not include a light bar, thank you. And I think the only thing that I don't like is this, but maybe that's like, I don't like badges on anything. I really just want the Volvo logo and then to be left alone. You know what I mean? What I was really surprised to find was that there is a kick open tailgate for a mid-size sedan. Now, I know that they're popular on all of these, you know, SUVs, but I was very surprised to find that out on here. Now, in terms of cargo capacity, we're looking at 11 cubic feet with the seats up and then 13 cubic feet with the seats down, which I think it's okay. It's a mid-sized sedan. What more do you really need? I mean, you know, you gotta make room for the batteries and, and all the other components in the back. It's not gonna sink down to the bottom like a Lincoln Town car at this point. You know what I mean? I'm talking a lot. I had a lot of caffeine before this. <sighs> oh. Dingle dong. <laughs> I love the way this thing greets you. Yes, hello, and welcome to the gorgeous, luxurious, plush, nicely outfitted, uh, well thought out, stunning interior. Six adjectives for one car, and that's this Volvo S60 Recharge. Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, I'm obsessed with this interior. I've had, I, I, I sat in this and I was like, oh, this is my car. Like, this is me in a car. Like, I, and I've even had people come up to me and be like, you kind of look like you drive that. And I'm like, yes, I do. Because this is my car. I'm not giving this back to Volvo. <laughs> now, of course, there are some positives and some negatives uh, with any car. But I mean, and I'll go over that in a second. But just by and large, this thing is just, oh, it's been such a treat to drive. I mean, Look, there are Mercedes and BMWs that are, are gorgeous, right? In their material and, and their outfitting. They have great tech and, and all that stuff, but this has like a personality that I vibe with. Let's go over the materials first. So I'm obsessed with this materials, with all of the materials on the interior. Um, the piano gloss black is driving me crazy, but I'll get into that in a second. Um, even right down to the door panel plastic, it's got this like texture to it that are these like little groove indent thingies that just add the texture. The open pour wood grain, ooh, it's actually open pour. It feels like it's gonna give you a splinter. I mean, that's how real it feels. Um, the stitching on the dashboard, the design of the dashboard, it just feels large and like in your face um, in a good way. Even just these like uh, HVAC vents, you know, the the buttons that you need to kind of deal with to close the vents themselves uh, have a, a tactile nature to it. And even right down to the turn signal and the windshield wiper stocks, I mean, they have tactileness on, on the parts that you need to be pressing. The buttons on the steering wheel, albeit our piano gloss black, are actually buttons. You know, it's a 2024 and it has real buttons and I'm very grateful for that. You know, the silver. I mean, it's a lot of different elements that actually all kind of like go together. I mean, even right down to this Orafors, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Sweden crystal gear selector. It lights up at night. It's so stunning. It's like the little small little details that are just, I'm obsessed with in this S60. The other thing is that these wool blend performance seats, you know, the PR guy at Volvo, when I first rode in one of these was like, you're gonna love these seats. And I was like, eh, I don't know, I'm more of a leather gal, but 
yeah. These seats, yeah, they're so comfortable too. Additionally, love this sunroof. I talked about the ex on the exterior portion how much I love the sunroof, but it's got this like tactile gesture control thing. I'm not gonna go over it because my GoPro's up on top, but like, it's cool. I really like it. You just swipe it forward, you swipe it back. I really like it. Okay, moving on to the technology portion of it. So Volvo's got some really great technology. I think that it's on par with some of its German competitors. The only thing that I kind of balk at in terms of the technology is probably the operating system of the infotainment system. So the infotainment system is a 12.3 inch vertical infotainment system and um, it uses Android Auto OS, um, which is good for the maps. Uh, it's good for, you know, that kind of AI girly by your side that you can be like, hey, Google, set the cabin temperature to 70 degrees. All right, changing the temperature to 70 degrees. Thanks, girl. Hey, Google, set the fan speed to four. Okay, changing the fan speed to four. So you've got that. I like that. I like being able to be like, hey, girl, go home. You know, like I like being able to be like, hey, girl, find me a charging station that works. Um, she's not going to be that specific. But I really like that aspect of it. Um, I like the fact that uh, they have kind of made a tactile camera button that you can look at the 360 degree camera with. The 360 degree camera is pretty good. Uh, it's not the best, but it's pretty good. Um, you know, you can kind of look at it from the side. Uh, you can look at it directly from the front. You can toggle the parking sensors as well, especially if you go into a car wash. Um, there is only one singular tactile button that is down here. Um, and then the HVAC control is all digital and I don't love that I don't if you're gonna make it all digital at least make it immediately accessible um, because sometimes when I press that button it takes a while for the climate control system to enact uh, and I don't really love that like it, it sometimes it lags do love the fact that it's got a heated steering wheel and a heated seat uh, it's got heated seats in the back as well because this does have the climate package now it does offer you a car status but it doesn't show you anything p have related and I'll get into more of that in a second but I I don't love the fact that it uh, has, it doesn't really show you anything other than the tire pressure scent monitor. Um, the other thing is that uh, the settings button does allow you to configure everything that you should be able to configure in a modern car. The only gripe that I have with it is that the drive mode should be a, um, a little wheelie button here in the center console where it's not. Um, in the XC60 and the XC90, it is a little wheelie button, but in the S60, you do have to click the, um, the cog for the settings, and then you have to go into drive mode, and then you can go between hybrid power, pure, constant all-wheel drive, and then you can choose to hold the battery or charge it or keep it on auto, depending on what it is. Um, I kind of wish that the drive modes were a little bit more in your face, a little bit more tactile. Um, but you know, I mean, I guess you're not really going to be changing up your drive modes all that much. Um, I am, but yeah, you're also able to change the steering feeling firm, which basically just means it's the sport mode steering. Uh, and so steering feeling firm is a choice of words that I wish marketing would kind of go back and be like, huh, maybe we should change that a little bit. I don't know. Um, creep is also a fun word that they have chosen for uh, their little creep move along, you know, so that it doesn't stay stagnant. Other than that, I mean, I just, I have had to reset the infotainment system uh, because it was playing music out of my phone speaker and not through the speakers in the car. Um, it's just a little wonky. I mean, it is better. It's a lot better than the outgoing infotainment OS. Don't get me wrong. I am glad that in the newer models that they have implemented like a, um, an operating system outside of a proprietary one, but it still needs a little bit of work. It's not horrendous, but it still needs a little bit of work. You know what I mean? Moving on to the gauge cluster. The gauge cluster is also 12 inches. You know, the only two kind of modes that you can have it in are the Google Maps or blank. I just kind of wish that there was some more P head information. Like I wish that they had like a car icon in the center, kind of showing you what's going on with the, uh, you know, the regenerative braking and stuff. Now there is on the right hand side that is present in the right hand side. And it does show you enough information. Maybe I'm just uh, 
spoiled with information when it comes to these PHEVs and, and hybrids and stuff that I've driven in the past. It's just very minimalistic when it comes to the gauge clusters information and just information in general uh, for the PHEV. It's very simplistic. Um, now, that's not an issue. It's just simple. And if you like simple, then that's all you really need. You know, I mean, even right down to when you're charging and when you're in charge mode, it just elicits a little lightning bolt in the battery icon, uh, which is cute and effective and adorable at the same time. Now, speaking of the gauge cluster, uh, when you are in hybrid mode, it will use this like oil droplet icon that kind of sits at a position as to juxtaposition to how much power you have in the hybrid mode. Uh, and whenever you power, when you're when you're accelerating and it goes past it, that's when you know that you're um, turning on the engine. Um, and it's a pretty interesting take on it. And I do like it. Again, I do like it. It's just very minimal. Enough ranting. I love this thing. I'm obsessed with it. I, 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 It's got its little quirks and its little features. Hi, Doug DeMiro. But I mean, it's... It's comfortable. I fit in the back very well. You know, I do think that it might need a little bit more in terms of the cargo capacity. But other than that, it's a really, really nice mid-size sedan. It's so nice in here. And I would absolutely buy one. I think people all the time ask me, would you buy this? Like, I know you review it, but would you buy this? I would go to the... D if I... If I had unlimited amounts of money. I mean, this coupled with my pickup truck, what a hot combo that would be. Come on. I would love this. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Thank you to Johnson Balbo of Durham for sponsoring today's video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you get notified. I'm also Swedish, by the way. Did you know that? I'm part Swedish. Bye bye Hey, Sparks. Thanks for watching today's video. Do you want more Spark Plug TV content? then you can choose one of these three options right over here. The middle button is to subscribe to my channel, so please do that. Right over here. These three. I can't see them in real life, but they're right here.